So first we're going to start with Nick Liffen, who is from GitHub and has a really, really interesting topic. Now, looking looking at this, um, we're looking at shifting left in a lot of the discussions in this conference, but now we're going to really look at it from the developer point of view. So I'm really excited to see what Nick has to say on the topic. Perfect. So hopefully you all should be seeing a um, sort of presentation mode, Google slide deck. Um, firstly, just wanted to open up with a massive thank you for everyone who joined this session. I know there was two other really interesting sessions, one on developer experience that you may have been tempted to go to. So I really do appreciate you coming to this session and giving me I'm hoping about 20 minutes, 25 minutes of my time really to go over why developer first process and tooling is critical whenever we think about shift left and cloud. So I just wanted to open up with a big thank you for you all and also echo in some of the comments made. Please feel free to use the chat. Um, and afterwards, we are again, more than happy to answer any questions. But nevertheless, let's sort of get get straight into it. So just a quick hello from myself. As, um, as was mentioned, my name is Nick. I'm one of the architects in GitHub. Um, for people in the UK or know the UK, I'm based out of a town called Reading, just southwest of London. And just to share what I am passionate about, I've got three sort of serious ones and then one jokey one. So I'm a, I'm a really big believer in developer experience and DevSecOps. I think that is critical to how we have been working for the last five or 10 years and also how we will continue to work um, over the next five or 10 years and specifically developer experience focused. Outside of work, I'm an avid golfer. So if there are any golf questions that you may have or anyone wants a conversation about golf, I am absolutely all here for a conversation. And lastly, I'm a huge emoji fan, as I'm sure people at GitHub can attest to. Um, you will see many emojis and many different images used throughout this presentation. So that's just a little bit of a hi and an introduction from myself. Um, the agenda for today's session I actually want to take you through a bit of a journey. So I want to open up with a high level history around how a developer worked and how we used to build software. I then want to flip that over and then talk about how we work today. Let's take a step back. How do developers work today? And then most importantly, I want to compare the two and give you a slightly different angle and slightly different lens on shift and left that we all may think and we all may, may sort of originally think of when we think about shifting left. And then I'm going to use security as an example to bring it home and really to really use, an, use that as an example to say, hey, this is why shift left possibly isn't what we first thought it was. And then finishing with some concluding thoughts. So it's really going to be a journey for today's session. So I want to open up with a question, and this is not a question that I want anyone to answer. And you can use the chat to share your thoughts if you want. But my ask of everyone in this call is to think about what is your answer to this question? And the question is, is the shift left term the correct phrase the industry should be advocating? Now, I am sure I've done this presentation a few times and I've done it face to face and people in the audience look at me and go, like, why, why wouldn't shift left be the correct phrase? So bear, bear with me. Um, but I really, really want you all to think about what is your answer to this question right now. And then at the end, you, you may have a slightly different, different thought or you may think the same. But I want you to really think about that now and also throughout the presentation. So let's get straight into it. I firstly want you to meet Finn. Finn is our example developer. So the year is 2005 for Finn, the role, he is a software developer. And Finn has been tasked with a use case. And that use case is he needs to deploy a web application. So that's what Finn has to do. And on a really high level, this is how Finn used to work. So you had your project managers. And your project managers were really there to build the business requirements, do the analysis, and they would really do everything for Finn up front, making sure that Finn has everything he needs from a business requirements perspective to ensure that he is ready to build that software. Now, once that's sort of done, it would, the project manager will hand over to Finn. 
Finn will then go ahead and write the code for the application. Finn will then start to build out this web app and it may take him three or four weeks, maybe even longer, depending on, on, on the web app. But Finn, Finn's main job here is he is actually writing the code for this web application. Now, once Finn is done and he thinks the web app is built, Finn will then hand off to some testers, right? And these testers back in 2005 are realistically most likely doing some manual testing, making sure that the requirements built actually match what Finn has actually gone and developed. And then at the same time, he's going to hand off to some, to some security people. They're going to likely do some manual security testing, but they may also have some tools to use. And then again, the year is 2005. So Finn is handing off to some infrastructure people and Finn is racking and stacking, and sorry, the infrastructure people are racking and stacking these servers to make sure that they have the needed infrastructure for the web application. And whilst the testers, the security people and infrastructure people are doing all of this, the developer is just pretty chilled, right? Like I have been a developer that works in this way and I may work on a different project. I may go and work on something else. But in regards to this project, I'm done. My, my main purpose is really writing this code. And obviously the testers may come back and say, hey, like Finn, you need to go ahead and fix this. Something isn't working, same with security. And you may like loop over that three or four times, but after a while, you're gonna have a web app. And I think everyone on this call is likely thinking, Nick, this is the way we used to work. No one really works like this this today, and this just doesn't work. And I think we all know this, right? This is nothing new to anyone on this call. It just wasn't effective. Um, and some of the problems that we really saw, as I'm sure we all know, it was incredibly slow to to release, right? You like Finn would build the app, and then have to wait ages for the testers to do their thing, have to wait ages for security to do their thing. And same for the infrastructure people. That naturally meant it was very inefficient. There were lots of efficiency gains that could be made. And obviously, that naturally led to being it very expensive. And there are so many other problems with that way of work. And I think we have all, per se, moved on from that. But realistically, this is how a software developer used to work. And the very traditional terminology, per se, is you throw it over the wall. The project manager would go ahead and build the analysis and the requirements. Once they're done, they're going to throw it over the wall. Not my job anymore. The developer will go ahead and do a lot of the design, do a lot of the development. And once they've built it out, they're going to throw it over the wall to the tester, throw it over the wall to the security person, infrastructure people, so on and so on. And then once that's done, they'd throw it over the wall and it will be finished. And obviously, as we're all likely thinking, this is very waterfall and it's just a very inefficient and not very good way of working, right? So this was back in 2005. And obviously people started to realize, well, that isn't, there's lots of things that we can do to improve here. And this is where the shift left terminology really comes into its own. And like the industry started to realize, well, it's actually going to be a lot more efficient and a lot more cheaper if we go ahead and start shifting a lot of this work left. Like as the developer writes the code, it would be great if he or she can then go ahead and test and test their code and make sure there's no security problems. Like if they, if they can find all of any, like any problems or issues like earlier, it's going to be a lot cheaper right and that's where this diagram on the left really sort of has become a buzzword bingo is lots of companies started to think about shifting left and over the last transparently 10 years and a lot of companies are still doing it today right a lot of these companies have tried to shift a lot of their stuff left and for the people that maybe aren't aware of what shift left is like I see many developers having very passionate and many DevOps engineers having very passionate interpretations of shift left and my fundamental belief in is there is no sort of right or wrong way to approach shift left. Like the underlying uh, fundamentals and behaviors and principles of shift left are, are the same. They are really focused on you finding bugs, issues, problems in your software earlier in the life cycle to naturally make it cheaper and more efficient. And that's really what we all have been doing for quite some time now. Hi, we are Ethicode and we organize the DevOps conference. What developers really want is to see their software live. CICD minimizes the time from idea to software delivery. We would love to speak with you to learn how we could help you to remove the pain and uncertainty from your software development lifecycle.
You can find us at ethico.com. The links are in the description. And have a great time with the DevOps Conference Talks. But when we take a step back, like what, what actually happened when we started to shift left, right? So obviously, traditionally, the testers would go ahead and write a lot of the tests. And nowadays, what you see is testers have sort of shifted their work over to a developer. And I'm sure we have a lot of developers on the call today. And as a developer writes the code, you now see the developer writing the tests. And the reason being, right, we've, we've shifted this left. Developers now have tools. Developers now have information to be able to go ahead and write these unit tests, regression tests at the same time that they write the code. And it, it makes sense, right? The tester would go, well, you you actually wrote this function you wrote this code so you know a lot better than me like let's like like it's going to save a lot of time like of me getting up to speed if you just go ahead and write the test and the, and the developer so finn in this case would be like yeah like sure that makes so much sense i'll write the code and i'm also going to go ahead and write the tests and you also saw the same thing with infrastructure right because now infrastructure is now as code the infrastructure people would be like, well, obviously, we're now moving everything to AWS, Azure, Google, so on and so on and so on. And everything we do is infrastructure as code. You're writing this web application, right? So can you go ahead and write the infrastructure at the same time? It's a very small web application. Maybe you, like you, you just need a CDN, and an S3 bucket with some lambdas. Um, can you go ahead and write out all of that infrastructure um, at the same time? It's going to be a lot, a, lot, a lot quicker. We don't really know how your app works. And the developer, Finn, would be like, yeah, sure, like, I'll write the code. It makes sense for me to write the tests, and I may as well write the infrastructure at the exact same time. And then, obviously, these project managers started to be like, we need data for leadership. We need to track how we're doing. We need to do burn-down charts. We need to really keep ahead around the way that we work. We're working agile now. And the project manager would be like, are you able to go ahead and write these user stories out? Like, you know the app a lot better than me. It's going to take me like three or four hours to do. It's going to take you like an hour to do. Are you able to write these user stories um, like just before you get started? Would that, be, would that be okay? And the developer would be like, sure, like writing a test makes sense, infrastructure makes sense, and like I do know the code the best. So that, yeah, I can go ahead and, 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 and put some stories into the backlog. Absolutely fine, not a problem. And then with security, you saw the same thing. Like we shifted a lot of the security tools left. So now developers are seeing the data before security. And the security people would be like, come on, like, why don't you fix all of these vulnerabilities? Like, I thought we shifted, like, you have access to this data, right? Like, I still see thousands of these results. And the developer would be like, come on, like, there are thousands of vulnerabilities to fix here. Like, I, I, my workload has just, in, like, increased. I've gone from, per se, writing code, and I'm now doing a lot more testing infrastructure. I'm now also doing a lot of the project management. Like, sure, like, I'm happy to do security. Like, I obviously want to write a secure code, but, like, this tool has, like, a thousand results. And most security people, realistically, would be like, okay, like, fix what you think matters, and it's absolutely fine. And, obviously, Finn would go ahead and now try to ensure that he's writing secure code by using these security tools. And what that has gone and done and gone and built up is this is how developers now work, right? Like the role of a developer has grown. You now see, you still see project managers, you still see testers and you still see security people, infrastructure, and they are still as in probably more involved in the life cycle, but who is doing it first and, and who is being more involved in realistically nowadays? It's developers, right? Developers are helping out with project management. Developers are also writing the code, as you would expect, but they're doing testing. They're also writing like, like secure code. And they're also doing a lot of the infrastructure. The role of a developer has grown as we have shifted left, right? Responsibilities have grown and that naturally means their workload. And I haven't even mentioned here all of the documentation increases, so on and so on. And I think as the role has grown, the, the the amount of touch points that they interact with. And I see these diagrams all the time. Companies being like, I've done it. I have, we are full DevOps. We have used, we're using every single tool. We are doing every bit of automation. We are giving so much data to the developers. We've shifted everything left. Life is great. I'm really happy. And you have these DevOps tool chains that look so complex, but it's perceived as being successful. But what you don't realize is, as you are introducing more tools, 
you're growing the responsibility on the people that are using these tools and you're also introducing more touch points. And then when you think you can't shift more left, you have this per se perception and you have this new per se capability coming out being like, guys, we've smashed it. We usually do a lot of our UI tests manual or we didn't do them at all. We've now introduced this fantastic new tool and it really helps us think more about ui testing so let's shift that left developers i assume you're okay with this right but as you write your front end code and you're writing your unit tests and your regression tests i also need you to write a lot of your ui tests at the same time and i think on on behalf of most developers like this is generally how it actually feels like there is such a push on shifting left and has anyone actually really asked the developer how they're working or what their experience is like? Or as you increase the number of workload, what tools are you using? Are you using developer first tools or are you using tools that were meant for the people before? And this causes this massive sort of frustration. And this is how it bottles up. And most of the time, this is how it actually feels. And I think when you take a step back and when you th- when you really think about what shifting left is really doing like it's really easy to think about that upfront value of shifting left which is making things cheaper and and more efficient but do we think about these change downstream um experiences that we're fostering like we are fostering a change of experience for the developers yes we are changing the experience for the testers the security people but we're putting a lot on the developer and are we really considering the experience that we're creating they so often get overlooked and they always seem to be overshadowed and some of the problems that we're seeing with shifting left right is it's such high context switching for a developer a developer used to probably stay in their terminal or stay just within their ide to write their code nowadays you ask a developer to go to their ide you ask them to go to their source of management tool their testing tool their security tool you're now asking them to go between five and six different places which means it's such high context switching so a developer lacks productivity and when we think about the problems we were trying to solve with shifting left, one of them was efficiency, right? But ironically, we've almost introduced a inefficient way of a developer working because they're now having to context switch between so many different tools and they're not as productive as they used to be. And what we're starting to see is software is now not being delivered as quickly as the business expects. And that's why when we shift left and we think about DevOps and DevSecOps, it's really hard to articulate some of that actual tangible value because are you actually delivering software at the rate that you really expected or what the world is championing about when people say shift left, you're going to save so much time. And what it actually seems like is developers don't feel that empowered and are their voices really being heard as obviously the business is trying to shift left, but do we think about the developers and the workload that we're really pulling on them? And is this like unapparent and unknown consequences that I believe generally have the most significant impact? Like you can think about that upfront value, but that unapparent and unknown stuff that we don't think about, that is really where we need to have the focus. And I think let's get specific and use security as an example here, right? Like five years ago, you had these security tools that were meant for security people. And I think that made sense, right? Like security was very, very much just a security thing. So these tools would be very focused and very tailored around the security persona, but that's not the way we work anymore, right? We've now shifted a lot of them tools left. So why are we okay with giving tools that were meant for security people to developers? We're using the same tools today, right? Like we're using the same security tools and there is now a modern push within GitHub and a few other companies to think differently. But most of the tools that we're giving to developers, are they actually meant for developers or are they meant for their target audience that we're using them five years ago? And this is where in the security world, we naturally start to see some of these questions. Like we see a lot of friction. Developers per se say like, like it's so hard to use this tool. Like it doesn't fit into my workflow. It doesn't give me the information that I need. Like I wanna know how to fix this. I don't wanna know really what it is. That's the difference between a tool that was for security people. They wanted to know lots about what the vulnerability is, but they wasn't necessarily fixing it. In the shift left mindset, we've given it to a developer. A developer really wants to know how to fix it. So there's a lot of friction with these tools. And the same 
we often hear this report has so many false positives. And that's why security is traditionally a second class citizen of the software development model. And that's a phrase that's really going around at the moment. It's because these tools are so like false positive heavy. And a lot of these tools focus on creating like a, a large volume of data. That's what security want to see. But a developer, just show me what I need to fix and show me how to go ahead and fix it. So when you think about these tools that are being introduced, it's really important to think about who is the tool meant for? And I think this is a really nice, like real life example. Like, so last March, um, unfortunately, I, I had to go in for surgery. And when I went in for surgery, I wanted everything in that room to be made and tailored for that surgeon the equipment everything that he used i wanted it to be made for that surgeon and if you went for surgery tomorrow you would want that surgeon everything to be meant for him but what would be some of the consequences if maybe the tools in the room was meant for a farmer or meant for someone else you're likely going to have a very slow surgery probably not going to have a very good success rate either so why in the developer world are we okay with thinking about giving tools to developers without really asking the question, are these tools meant for developers or are we just shifting left because we think it's going to save us money and save us a lot of time? And I think this is where I'm sort of coming up to my final, my final two slides now. Like, I think if you're going to take anything away, it's really going to be these two outcomes and these two key takeaways. Firstly, please understand that there is consequences and there are downstream impacts of shifting left, which we, and I think I can include myself in that, we may not have thought of and we may not have understood when we first went down this journey. And like when updating any tooling that you have in your DevOps tool chain or you introduce a new tool, yes, think about how easy it is to implement and, th and, and, and really think about like what's the value. But most importantly, Think about the experiences you want to create and foster for your developers and let that be the key decision making when you think about tooling. And secondly, like regarding that developer tooling, whether you use GitHub or any other company out there, if they say to you, we will help you shift left or we will help you automate or we will help write things more as code, like always ask the question, so what do you do to focus on developer experience? Like, would you consider yourself to really be a developer first tool and a developer first company? Because these are the questions that are starting to matter. And the industry is starting to get a lot smarter and more aware in this space. And we are seeing more customers challenge companies around being developer first and fostering and creating developer experiences. Because yes, it's about the tool, but it's really about them downstream experiences that you are creating. And I think to, to conclude, I think I, I obviously asked you all a question. Is the shift left term the correct phrase the industry should be advocating right at the start of this presentation? Here is my answer to that question. Like I generally believe like all of the principles and behaviors behind shift left, they remain solid and foundational, but it's not enough. Developer experience and developer first are almost like as important, like transparently, if not more than the whole shift left um, functionality. So when you do think about these tooling and you think about things that impact developers, really think about this is the experiences that I want to create for my developers. And let's go ahead and judge a tool or a process by that characteristic. So my answer to everyone in this call, and it's something for you to all think about and take, about, take away is, what's your answer to this question? Thank you ever so much for giving me the time to go through that presentation. And um, that was everything uh, my side. So thank you ever so much. Thank you, Nick. Thank that, you. Was, that was very good. Very, very thought provoking, let's say. <laughs> yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah, that that was that was very good insights, and there's there's a lot of discussion going on. And I before I'm I'm being selfish, and I'm gonna ask ask my own question because you <laughs> provoked my thought as well. But if we're thinking about shift left, wouldn't it kind of also change because we have right we have the developer in the beginning, but we're basically doing more of a prepare work. So we need to have the tooling and the processes supporting each mm. other, right? We can't have one without another. Agreed. 
Yeah. So if we want to actually, if we're, because I, I wrote down reality versus theory, because in theory, of course, we are going to prepare well. I mean, we're, we're handing out some nice, you know, thing to create for the developer and they're doing exactly as they did before with, yeah, with unit testing and all that. But are we actually in the point where we are trying to move, we're trying to shift left, but we are not really do, bringing the processes with us and we are putting the pressure on that? Developer. Yeah, I think that's uh, like a hundred percent. Like, it's very easy to think about a tool, and this tool, is, like, is saying it's going to save us all this time, and it, and it will help us shift left. But you don't actually think about what processes do we want to change alongside that tool, and that's why processes aren't the they underpin and they underlie a lot of the the reason why you pick a tool. So I completely agree. Like, a tool is a tool is a tool, but you really want to think about what's the processes and what's the experiences that we want to create and. When you think about security, like nowadays, we more think about like we want to create an experience for developers where um, where security is accurate and it's and it gives them information about like, how to fix the vulnerability versus what the vulnerability is. So yes, I think like absolutely like it's that change in foundation that then is able to help influence that upstream tool that tool decision. I would also add that um, basically providing the organizational. Uh, or rather, let's put it this way, uh, the support from the organization for the tooling also needs to be there. And by that, I mean that you should be using some sort of templated approaches uh, so that the, when the developer gets the responsibility of, let's say, the infrastructure as code or security scanning or stuff, uh, when you actually have correct templating, you can mm -hmm. simply inherit kind of all of the uh, pipelines that maybe other teams are using as well to sort of get a jump start on on the things that you need to achieve. Yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. And I think like everyone has, and this I I love the chat. Right, everyone has their own interpretation and their own thought about this, and like that's why I love doing this talk because everyone does have. Well, this is my thought on this, and generally there is no right and there's no wrong way of of of, 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 of really thinking about this. I think the main okay. purpose and why I love doing this talk is. It provokes a different, another angle, and it and it really provides. I didn't, I I knew that, but I didn't know that, and I think that's the like really interesting piece. So like, I I really hope people go away from like from the session, if not anything, just like just having that little thought in in the back of their mind whenever they see this DevOps tool chain. It it's more than that, and I think that's that's really important. But yeah, I think completely agree with your point. And I, I would actually add to that that I also it, it would be interesting to hear because we have different roles, right? Who 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 is seeing shift left? What is, what does it mean the different roles? If we're talking about C level, we talk about middle management or whatever, with implementation and test whatever. Shift left actually like what they take from this is going to be very different, and that's actually something that I feel like if we do get a company that is getting these roles together to actually discuss, it might mm -hmm. actually bring some like visibility and some um, uh, you know bringing some misunderstandings within the company yeah and i think you're seeing more i, I think you are seeing more and more focus on like devx right like i think like even at, even at conferences right like at the same talk as me there's another talk on developer experience like and i think that 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 is so great because i think being a like like a, a developer myself and like understanding some of the pain points like the more that we can think about devx and like actually like these fostering experiences that we're creating the better so yeah like i think like really really nice to see some of the thoughts like in in the chat of of of, of different people and if anyone wants like wants to reach out again i'm more than happy to like to talk about this this is a big passion area of mine and, and, I'm, and I'm sure for a lot of people in this call so um more than happy to to, to carry on the, the conversation we actually have a couple of questions in the q a uh, tab and they all seem to revolve uh, somewhat around the same theme. So I'm just gonna try to, to combine these in a way. So um, people are asking about the, the role of the developer and the responsibilities of the developer so mm -hmm. that there are way too many things that, that one might be responsible for. Yes. And also there was a mention about uh, these traditional roles like sysadmin, testers, et cetera, as developers. So should mm. we reevaluate the term developer and uh, kind of resource correctly as we shift left and add work to these uh, developers? 
Yeah, a hundred percent. And like, there's a very common theme in the chat, right, about that. So, I, and I think you, you you summarized it well. And I think the industry is like is already trying to differentiate, right? Like, you have an you now have like infrastructure developers, you now have front end developers, you now have back end developers, and transparently, like, they're all still doing similar things. Like, do you want your infrastructure tester, your infrastructure developer, to write tests? Yeah, like again, like nowadays with AWS Taskcat and stuff like that, like you want tests with your infrastructure, but you want tests with your backend and also your like front end. So like, like yes, I, I like I think that you see this evolve, but transparently, like that's why, yeah, that's almost why it's so important to think about developer experiences, right? And like transparently, in, in two or three years' time, I think imagine how much more responsibility the developer will have. And it's going to get to a point where, like, the developer will be doing all, all, all the things, and they'll be at breaking point. So that's why really focusing on, do you know what, these tools and these processes that we're going to put on the developer, where right, the developer will never leave their IDE or their or their source code. We're going to get all data. We're going to put it down, and the, the, all, everything that we create is going to make sure that it fits into a process. So that's why you see, like, enterprise architects now, and, and you see more of the C-level suite, really saying any new tool that we in we in it like introduce we use the tools data we don't use the tools GUI like because we want to put data back into github or we want to put data back into the ide so i think like yes we see the role going and yes like we are asking more and more of develop of developers and no one can be an expert in everything and i think like that's why i challenge you all as we do that really think about Okay, is this is adding this tool, or maybe we have these six tools? Can we think differently about how we give data to the to the developer? Yeah, and that kind of also leads to this uh, misconception of of having a software team where you have developers who own the type code, and then you have this mystical DevOps guy you do, who just yes. knows everything else. You know? Yeah. No. Um, yeah. Can, I, I, I think like. One thing I don't want to be perceived here is, well, are we moving away from security people and testing people? And the honest answer is no. Like, like transparently, we're trying to get security people to work closer with developers, right? Like, it's just a shift in responsibilities. You now hear trust, but verify. Let trust the developers to do the security, but provide the data to, to, to security to verify. So we're actually trying to be more inclusive in this market. The main thing is, don't just shift something left and, 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 and be happy with it because honestly, you, you won't see that value. At, you won't see that value as quickly as otherwise. And I, I think like, like there's some great, like great points in the chat and everyone has sort of their, their different takeaways. I think Jan, like your point at, at the bottom, I, I love it. I think like that's a, like, there's different, there's different takeaways on this and it's nice that you have formed an opinion cu coming out of this. All right. Thank you very much, Nick. Uh, we are out of time, and we need to move on to the next session. But yes. but this was but actually this was, very interesting. This uh, was really really good. Thanks thank so you much. For your time. Great.